The first thing you'll see when you open the Blink app are your cameras. Take a look at my indoor mini camera. The image that it shows here is not a live view, nor is it an image from the last motion detection that it recorded. This image is simply from me pressing the camera icon on the right side of the screen, which I'll do right now. So what's shown here is just a snapshot from your camera. If you want a live view, you can click on the video recorder icon that's on the left side. In the top right is a speaker icon, which I have turned off right now, and that lets you hear whatever the camera is hearing. This icon will make the video full screen on your phone. In the bottom left is a save icon. If you click that, it'll record and save the video that we're watching in the live view. Then you have hold to talk. If you hold that down, you'll be able to speak through your camera to somebody. And if we click more, you'll see device settings, which we'll look at after this. But next to that is extended live view, which is off. If you turn it on, you'll be able to watch your camera for up to 90 minutes, but you won't be able to save the clips. If you leave it off like I do, you can save the clips, but you can only use live view for up to five minutes at a time. Now we'll close this out and look at the other settings. The plus sign in the top right is for adding more Blink devices to your account. Right here, if we click this little sleeping bell icon, this allows you to snooze camera notifications, which means your camera will continue to record motion, but it won't send you notifications for whatever amount of time that you select. This little blue icon of a person running controls whether or not your camera records any motion. So if I click it right now, the icon turns gray. This means my camera will no longer record any motion. I can walk in front of it and it won't record. So it essentially turns off video recording if needed. I'll click it again. The icon turns blue and now it'll record video and motion. Next, we'll take a look at the settings for the camera. We'll click this icon here, then general settings. Here we can change the name of our camera, which I'll do right now. It also tells us which version of firmware our camera is running. Next is status LED. These are the lights on the front of the camera when it's recording. You can turn them completely off or always have them on. You can also change the Wi-Fi network that your camera is connected to, as well as see the strength of your Wi-Fi signal. Next are the motion settings. If you turn motion detection off, your camera will no longer detect motion, which means it'll no longer record video, so we'll leave that on. You can also adjust motion sensitivity. Setting it to a higher number will make it more sensitive to where it'll pick up on smaller things, such as a squirrel, which means you'll get more recordings. A lower number means it'll be less sensitive and your camera will only go off from bigger movements, such as a person. Here we have motion zones. As an example, pretend that I have a plant on the left side here on the table and each time the air conditioner turns on, it blows the plant's leaves and sets off my camera. And I don't want that, so I'll make a custom zone. First, select Update Photo to make sure the thumbnail image is up to date and accurate before making a zone. Then I can click on the rectangles where I don't want motion to be detected. Remember, I want to ignore my imaginary plant that's on the table, so I'll select the rectangles where my plant would be. They'll turn gray, which means those areas are no longer active and they won't detect motion. Then I can click Done and that zone will be saved. Next, we have Retrigger Time. When your camera finishes recording a clip, Retrigger Time is how long it will wait before recording a new motion clip. I have it on the shortest setting, which is 10 seconds, but the longest setting is 60 seconds. Then there's Early Notification. Right now it's turned off, so when my camera detects motion, it won't send me a notification to my phone until it finishes recording the video clip. But I'll turn that on, and now as soon as it detects motion and starts recording, I should instantly get a notification. Next are the video and photo settings. Here you can change how long your video clips will be. The max setting is unfortunately only 30 seconds, and the shortest setting is 5 seconds. Then there's video quality or resolution. Right now mine is on standard. 
Then you can end the clip early if motion stops. So your camera will stop recording immediately when it stops detecting any motion. Flip video will make the camera record upside down. You would use that if you're mounting your camera upside down like if you mounted it to the ceiling. For night vision, most situations you'd want it on auto, but you can also always have it on or off. And for IR intensity, I have it on medium for now as I'm pretty happy with how the night vision looks. For audio settings, this is an easy one. It controls how loud the speaker is on your camera when you're talking through it. Then for privacy settings, you can completely turn off the video recording or the audio. Now back to the main screen. At the bottom, you have armed or disarmed. When your cameras are armed, that means they should detect and record motion. If you set them to disarmed, then they shouldn't record or detect any motion. Then you have clips, which will show you all of the clips that your camera has recorded. You can watch or delete them. At the top are storage settings. I have it set to keep clips saved at the maximum of 60 days. And finally at the bottom right are more settings related specifically to your account such as your plan, email, password, etc. But you can also set schedules for your cameras to automatically arm and disarm at various times and on certain days if you like. And that's pretty much it. Please consider giving the video a like and thanks for watching.